Hi everyone. Uh, very good afternoon. My name is Ajay Ramasubramaniam. Uh, firstly, I'd like to thank the SA Innovation Summit for giving us this opportunity to be here and present. Uh, I'm the co-founder and CEO of a company, Startup Rezo. We are headquartered in Mumbai, India. Uh, our business essentially revolves around startups. Uh, we largely set up programs to accelerate growth of startups and uh, our business basically it, it caters to four different verticals. We work with large enterprises, uh, we work with governments, we work with investors, and we offer advisory and support services, all of them centrally catering towards startups and more so in, in order to be specific, uh, enterprise startups or B2B startups. Uh, today on the, uh, the pre-event day or the pre-launch day of the SA Innovation Summit, because the larger topic is around gender inclusion and women entrepreneurs, uh, we chose a topic to live stream around women entrepreneurs and how they're shaping the future of economies. Uh, it's a topic which is uh, very relevant in today's uh, day and age and time because cutting across governments, uh, boards of uh, extremely large enterprises, global companies, uh, management, startups, uh, we keep hearing about uh, gender equality and uh, and bringing in inclusiveness at, at different levels. And uh, women uh, is at the core of uh, diversity or inclusion because inclusion and diversity could mean different things to different people. But how can women entrepreneurs shape the future of economies uh, is, is something that uh, we'd like to touch upon and talk about. Uh, all the more reason because uh, over the past few years uh, in India, uh, me and a bunch of colleagues working together, uh, we have been uh, creating different programs catering to women entrepreneurs. And we have seen that uh, unless and until you create such structures or such programs, which help in improving the overall uh, state of women entrepreneurs, it is very difficult to arrive at any kind of parity. Yes, there will be a lot of people who talk about things such as uh, once you choose to become an entrepreneur, uh, irrespective of what your gender is, uh, you're, you're just an entrepreneur. But there are many who are privileged enough to talk about things in that way. But there are far many more people out there who are not as privileged and who need that kind of an opportunity that push that kind of a window, which actually helps in bringing, up, bringing them up to a level where they feel e as equals as entrepreneurs. And it is important to stress upon the fact that for every hundred male counterparts, who end up building companies and getting funded, the percentage of women entrepreneurs getting funded globally is an abysmal 6%. So less than, less, it's not even two digits. So unless and until you get to a state where it is a 50-50 or somewhere close by, uh, and it's some sense of parity, it is very important that governments, uh, private sector companies and organizations like ourselves realize the need and importance to create programs which improve the overall state of women entrepreneurs because we genuinely believe that women entrepreneurs uh, are going to be shaping the future of economies at, at different levels. We do have uh, several heads of state who are women. We do have several successful uh, businesswomen out there who are heading up large yeah. enterprises. We also have a lot of extremely successful women entrepreneurs who are doing well, not only for themselves, but creating jobs uh, in their economies who have gone on to raise a ton of money, but still there's a lot left to be desired in terms of bringing up this parity. So over the next few minutes, I'm going to kind of touch upon six bullet points that I have uh, picked up uh, and I'm going to kind of try and elaborate a, a little bit on, on each one of them. So the first and foremost one is, uh, what do we need to take into cognizance for nurturing and creating a conducive environment for women entrepreneurs to succeed? So uh, going straight to the point of women entrepreneurs and, and what kind of an environment is, is actually necessary because unless and until you kind of do some level of reflection or introspection to understand how or what needs to be done to the, the environment or the infrastructure which is created for supporting entrepreneurship, it is very difficult to uh, understand uh, the changes that will actually help women entrepreneurs succeed. Uh, this, this kind of requires uh, delving into a little bit of uh, social, uh, economic, and a lot of those kind of uh, aspects coming from emerging economies, uh, which, which kind of need to be considered uh, before we even touch upon the broader topic or the narrow topic, the way you look at uh, in terms of uh, entrepreneurship. So uh, a classic example, I mean, uh, so I have been running incubators, accelerators uh, with a, a co-working space that uh, that entrepreneurs who become a part of our accelerator uh, uh, 
kind of work out of. And one of the common trends that you get to see is that in the first place, when you talk of a physical space which hosts uh, entrepreneurs, there is a skew in the percentage of male entrepreneurs and female entrepreneurs, and likewise also in uh, the, the gender diversity within teams. It is now that people talk a lot about gender diversity and inclusion, but generally if you walk into uh, any startup or if you walk into a co-working space, uh, the chances are very high that you would find number of men to be significantly higher than the number of women. So what this automatically does is that the avenues created, uh, even when you talk of such physical infrastructure, for men to bond over a drink, over a smoke, probably over lunch is way higher then the opportunities that kind of end up getting created for women to mingle or to be, so they should, they should never come to a point where it is being one among the boys, right? Uh, and, and that comes with its own sets of uh, pros and cons, with cons being severely uh, higher or more than the pros that it offers. So in the first place, you need to kind of understand how do you nurture or how do you create a conducive environment which nurtures or uh, is more welcoming uh, for women to be a part of uh, an ecosystem like this uh, and also kind of to to encourage uh, many more uh, women whether they, they come from a stem background or a business background to positively think about uh, entrepreneurship because entrepreneurship by itself or doing a startup by itself in emerging economies uh, still has uh, or i wouldn't call it a taboo but still it is kind of looked down upon at, uh, at different levels. Um, it, it may not be considered to be highly rewarding. It may not be considered to be really looked up as, as a job uh, and things like that. Uh, the other thing is a, a lot of women uh, who end up taking a career break for no other reason but to bring up a family, they need to be welcomed back into the fold. So a lot of these kind of things, uh, there are things, I mean, as, as minute or as deep as say personal hygiene. I mean, when you talk of, when you talk of startups having small offices or co-working spaces, uh, even when you talk of uh, very basic things like uh, probably the, the, the common areas, the washrooms, unless and until you consider every aspect which makes a woman to really feel uh, secure or the, the environment to be very welcoming, it is only then that you're going to kind of really make the doors open and uh, allow people to become a part of this, this broader startup ecosystem journey that, uh, that one talks about. So, I mean, uh, when you talk of uh, women entrepreneurs and things that need to be done right to uh, help them succeed, right from uh, skilling them, right from encouraging them, right from providing them with an opportunity, uh, avenues to access different source of funding. I mean, one of the common uh, pain points or problems that a lot of women entrepreneurs face and which gets kind of well publicized is issues like, I mean, investors asking them when do they plan to start a family? I mean, these kind of things would never be posed to their male, count male counterparts. So why should a woman be posed such questions? So a lot of things which border upon uh, at a personal level, uh, at a societal level, at an economic level, a lot of things that need to kind of actually undergo some kind of change uh, to create an environment which is conducive, which means welcoming for women entrepreneurs. And at the same time, it kind of elevates their status or it gives them that kind of a push, which allows them to even be competitive. So that is that is the first point that I would want to touch upon that one needs to kind of really take a step back and understand what are the things that need to change to actually create an environment which is conducive and welcoming for women to even pursue entrepreneurship? In fact, if you take a step back, uh, and this goes back, or uh, this is data coming from right up from the 1980s until 2020. So you're talking of almost 40 years or four decades. The percentage of women uh, who in the 80s uh, took up STEM uh, or, or stats and maths, uh, which basically forms the crux of people who get into coding. I think the percentage has, has constantly kind of gone down. India, it has been a little bit different in a sense that the number of women who actually uh, take up engineering and end up studying statistics, mathematics, coding, computer science, whatever you may call it, though the percentage has gone up significantly over a period of time, after they have had a, a, a short career of maybe anywhere between five to 10 years, a lot of women end up taking up management positions rather than technology positions or coding positions, which actually requires them to work in shifts uh, depending on what uh, time zone they're working with and things like that. So actually that is the talent which gets wasted. So you also need to kind of figure out that if you have girls 
uh, taking up uh, stats and maths and science in in grades eight to grade twelve, and then they end up doing engineering and pursue uh, coding at at some level or the other. How do you retain that talent? So a lot of things which need to kind of be reworked to ensure that from an economy standpoint or a country standpoint. uh the environment is really conducive and and welcoming and nurturing for women to actually become entrepreneurs uh the second point that i would like to go to uh is uh i'm actually reading off questions that uh, me and our team kind of uh, put together over the past few days to kind of address the main topic which is about when you're talking of women entrepreneurs and shaping the future of economies what are the things that need to be really considered so is there a need for cultivating a gender led support ecosystem so one of the classical challenges uh, that i'd like to touch upon over here that despite a lot of women being in a position where they are uh, senior leaders within uh, large organizations and they're managing significantly large teams if you still end up going to them asking for their time to mentor younger women who have chosen to take up entrepreneurship as a path that they want to follow uh, it's it is difficult to find a lot of senior leaders being able to pull out time to mentor this young change makers or these young uh, entrepreneurs i think it is very uh, important at at that point to to touch upon a gender led support ecosystem which means women mentoring women uh, women creating corpuses or funds to support women entrepreneurs a good example would be uh, someone like vicky saunders from from toronto who who runs a ceo and uh, it is well documented i mean if you try to look up uh, wiki where she where initially when she started talking about ceo it was kind of uh, frowned upon or laughed upon that i mean i've heard of a ceo what is a ceo but over a period of time the way she has kind of uh, the way she she calls ceo to to be uh, a group of or a tribe of women bringing in a radical generosity which means that women pulling together resources or funds to support women entrepreneurs with a, a lot of give back Uh, to 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 women entrepreneurs as an ecosystem i think that is a, a classical example which needs to kind of pick up in in different parts of the world and and globally uh, because that is that is one of the better ways or best ways of uh, kind of giving back to the ecosystem or probably uh, women supporting women at at different levels because the women and and so while on on one footing you can say that entrepreneurship as a journey is fairly common whether you are a man or a woman i think there are a lot of things that uh, women face as a challenge which probably men uh, do not face and this starts right from your home uh, to the way you are perceived by probably your peers uh, probably your competitors and and things like that and that is where to build a very strong gender led kind of a support ecosystem is equally important so on one hand you have the ecosystem of entrepreneurs and as a microcosm of that you have a uh, a sub ecosystem which is gender led uh, wherein you are talking of women entrepreneurs who have kind of been there done that helping the next generation of women entrepreneurs to figure out how they went about doing things what are the the growth hacks that they have kind of built over the years uh, what are the do's and don'ts that you need to kind of really focus on what kind of mentors you need to kind of uh, try and get on board uh, so basically i mean uh, uh, a kind of a one on one or strategies for kind of uh, succeeding uh at the same time uh, probably corporate leaders who who champion uh, gender inclusion and gender diversity within their organization they should try and look outside their organization as well and try and support women entrepreneurs who are trying to make a difference whether it's a a social enterprise a, a for profit uh, business whether it is a, it's an ngo or or whatever it is increasingly a lot of large global organizations have also uh, set up policies where it says that x percentage of the the procurement that they do has to come from women owned businesses this is yet to kind of catch on in a massive way in in emerging economies but even if you look at uh, extremely large global organizations like the cisco's and the pepsi's and the intels of the world despite whichever country or irrespective of which country or geography that they operate in uh, they pretty much make sure that uh, that policy uh, stands good uh, and procurement is done in in line with whatever is followed in in their headquarters so that is a great way of kind of being a, a gender led uh, support ecosystem similarly if you look at uh, investors there have been attempts uh, of women coming together to uh, to create corpuses of funds whether it is structured as a vc fund it's an early stage venture fund uh, probably a, a syndicate of 
who uh, have done well for themselves uh, and and want to kind of give back to the the ecosystem kind of pooling resources uh, but still it requires a, a lot more effort to kind of be uh, be out there uh, because increasingly you see that there are a lot many more women who uh, after taking a career break or probably right after their uh, education as well uh, they feel that they have it in them to kind of build a business and and make that impact and create jobs so you need to kind of find ways and means to uh, support women entrepreneurs and that is where uh, having a gender led uh, support ecosystem can play a very uh, strong role in in kind of uh, uh, reinvigorating the the whole women entrepreneurship ecosystem uh, so we have covered two points uh, I'll, I'll go on to the the next one uh, on the topic of gender itself uh, do women in tech or female founders uh, have to deal with gender bias and and discrimination so as an individual myself uh, as someone who has been in the startup ecosystem space uh, currently running my my own company previously uh, almost in the role of an entrepreneur uh, running a, a standalone india entity of a, of a canadian uh, brand uh, i i have never kind of uh, come across gender bias or discrimination uh, within the organizations that i have worked at also have ensured that uh, whichever startups or growth stage companies that we work with uh, there is some level of uh, sensitization which is done uh, to kind of uh, and and that probably comes because of the kind of programs that uh, we also have been running in the past and present uh, which uh, border on on gender inclusion gender diversity and and as an organization also uh, i've always ensured that i mean uh, there is uh, at least an equal number of uh, men and women i mean it the skill sets are pretty much the similar ones so it doesn't matter whether it's a man or woman uh, but at the same time i also make a conscious effort to ensure that uh, there is no uh, discrimination done at a, at an organizational level in terms of what role we give whom because i mean we all work kind of uh, sleeves rolled up in the in the environment that we are in uh, nurturing startups and working with startups so uh, man or woman doesn't matter to to me as an individual or us as a company uh, but at the same time uh, a lot of early stage companies as well nowadays what we have observed is that uh, people do not have hesitation in in hiring uh, men or women i mean gender is is not a problem but yes i mean you do keep hearing about things and lot of it uh, through media uh, but at the same time uh, also uh, first hand stories which uh, some entrepreneurs might have shared at some time uh, in the past present Uh, in terms of some kind of bias that they might have faced and this largely comes uh, from a standpoint of uh, going out there to trying trying to raise uh, venture money uh, at the same time it is uh, it is questionable i mean uh, you don't know who are those kind of investors because i haven't personally met investors who have a thesis saying that we would not invest in women entrepreneurs i think uh, for investors uh, so this is a point i i generally or in some instances tend to kind of deviate a little bit away from what is spoken about because investors more often than not would invest in companies that give them the returns because at the end of the day someone who is uh, their lps or the gps investors are working towards kind of maximizing the money that uh, their lps and gps have invested in the fund or the corpus and i don't think that for too many investors uh, it would matter whether a man is building a company or a, or a female is building a company uh and i i can kind of uh, say that if any investor thinks that way uh, it would be very shallow uh, in terms of uh, thinking itself uh but at the same time i think uh, people need to kind of when they think of building businesses they need to think of building businesses which have scale associated with them if you have cracked the code on that one i don't think that uh, on the basis of uh, who's building the company uh, any kind of discrimination would be would be made uh but at the same time i also feel that to encourage more women to take up entrepreneurship there there needs to be significantly more number of uh, efforts that need to be kind of put in uh, to show success stories so that uh, it kind of attracts many more to kind of uh, take up uh, entrepreneurship uh, at the same time uh, successful entrepreneurs talking about how do you navigate uh, so some sometimes i mean just like in interviews any any kind of interview it could be interview to get into uh, premium academic institution it would be an interview to to get a, a coveted kind of a job uh, a lot of times the interviewers might just put a, a tough question out there to see how you tackle that how you handle that uh, whether you kind of crumble in pressure or or things like that so i also feel that sometimes investors might be asking tough questions to just see how how well equipped uh, you are to to address such a scenario 
a, a good example uh, could also be uh, whether do you have any kind of business succession or business continuity plan so if an investor is uh, and that is why uh, a lot of times investors tend to back companies which is not a, a solo founder company where you have more than one uh, founder and this again happens uh, even if it is a, a two men forming a company or three men forming a company for a simple reason that uh, even if the team does not uh, get along or if there is uh, if there is kind of disagreement on certain points uh, at least uh, the the business in which an investor has put money into that does not shut down overnight so when investors if if they do ask questions where they they check uh, uh, with a female uh, founder that if you are planning to start a family anytime soon how would it, how would that affect the uh, the business uh, in all possibility they are also trying to check that do you have a business continuity plan in place right so even if you do not have a co-founder do you have management which is senior enough which you uh, know will be able to sail through those few months where you are unable to kind of uh, attend to office full time as you otherwise uh, would be so it, it uh, so it's a very borderline and it's a very uh, sensitive or a, or a, or a touchy kind of a topic uh, i myself have not kind of uh, posed this question to anyone uh, and at the same time uh, i while i have heard this from a couple of entrepreneurs who who share it uh, i haven't personally been at at the end to kind of uh, say that yes this is something that uh, investors kind of uh, insist upon or uh, is a question which kind of is a, a deal maker or a deal breaker Uh, however it's like i said it's a very uh, sensitive topic and a very borderline topic but my defense if at all uh, would be that uh, probably uh, you're being checked upon for a business succession or business continuity uh, coming to the next point um, is there an importance of celebrating success stories and role models uh, amongst women are we seeing that happen so absolutely important for for anything uh, i think there is there is no better mirror that can uh, show a, a picture than uh, success uh, i think this applies not just for uh, celebrating success stories of women entrepreneurs but equally uh, people coming in from underprivileged backgrounds people coming in from smaller cities which otherwise are not known for a large entrepreneurship or a, or an innovation hub uh, i think uh, all of the work that uh, media does paid unpaid that doesn't matter i mean as long as someone is uh, talking something about you uh, it it should all con- it should all be considered to be positive uh, i think uh, celebrating success stories is is super important i think a lot of times uh, awards nights and uh, uh, felicitation ceremonies of entrepreneurs and things like that are kind of looked down upon or mocked at i mean a lot of times you hear 40 under 40 30 under 30 i mean uh, illustrious publications like the forbes of the world they all do this uh, so i think uh, as long as you're uh, you're doing the, some some of the things in jest or it is just for kind of uh, memes that you can forward on any of the the social media that that kept aside i think uh, coming on the point of celebrating success stories all of these awards these recognitions i think uh, they are pretty much to be uh, uh, celebrated within the ecosystem because Uh, i think uh, for a lot of companies when they are very early on and they haven't raised a ton of money and they're not a public company and not too many people know about the company beyond uh, their their ecosystem of stakeholders which might be the customers partners friends and family early investors uh, i think uh, some of the things that you can talk about whether it's on your pitch deck whether it's on your website are those small successes Uh, whether you won a small little startup competition in a very nondescript kind of a city, uh, whether it's a twenty under twenty or a thirty under thirty that you won, I think all of these are are very important not just to make yourself look good uh, for your own confidence, but also when you talk about it, uh, I'm sure that there are people out there who who kind of uh, look that up and feel that okay, maybe this guy, this female is is doing something meaningful or meritorious. But at the same time, if you look at it beyond yourself or your company uh, i think celebrating these uh, success stories and uh, also in some cases uh, making them as role models so think of it i mean uh, a college or university which is not really known for uh, producing a ton of entrepreneurs if you are the first one from that university or college to kind of make it and uh, whatever little success you achieve whether it is through initial rounds of funding that you have raised 
or probably some of the media that you achieve i think if you go back to 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 that college or university you almost have a, a demi god kind of a status because uh, your peers people who kind of uh, saw you in campus till about a year back or a couple of years back i mean for them it acts as as a major source of inspiration similarly people coming from small towns or smaller cities like i said earlier uh, i think uh, celebrating these success stories it it kind of is uh, is not just for now and today but it is the next generation which will kind of uh, be able to leapfrog or be able to emulate your success or kind of latch on to your success and you will see many more people like you kind of building company so similarly for for women entrepreneurs i think it is super important that uh, success stories of women entrepreneurs should be told loud and clear mm-hmm. and it should kind of uh, get whatever media it can uh, because this is something that will help many more women uh, think out aloud get a lot of confidence that if she can do it i can do it as well you can you can have role models that people can look up to and say hey i mean if so and so has has done this and achieved this despite such and such challenges the challenges that i face are are minuscule or much smaller than what she has faced so i i should attempt and not keep my idea to myself i think uh, that is that is very important uh, for kind of uh, like i said uh, building a, a larger uh, ecosystem success story rather than an individual success story uh, and in india in particular like i would say uh, are we seeing that happen yes Uh, there are a lot of lot of programs now which are focused on women entrepreneurs the the facebooks and the microsofts of the world the googles of the world they do run uh, very focused uh, programs uh, uh, which which are are very much focused on gender inclusion they focus on women entrepreneurs or companies in which a woman owns uh, a minimum 50% uh, large companies like the ambays and the walmarts of the world uh, they they have policies of procurement like i said earlier uh which focus on women owned businesses uh, a lot of uh, uh how do i put it industry associations or bodies uh which are creating uh wings or departments which are focusing on on women entrepreneurs and they bring in successful women from all walks of life i mean whether it is industry or the corporate world uh, professional services like law firms and accounting firms they bring in uh, senior women leaders who who have kind of been there done that uh th- them talking about how they went about kind of uh, achieving success i think uh, a lot of that is important to kind of really create that push effect or create the confidence uh, in people who who probably have had a career they have taken a sabbatical they are finding it difficult i mean uh, do not make a mistake i mean uh, anyone who has taken a career break i mean even this period of uh, covid 19 where many of us are kind of working from home uh i think uh, it is it is going to allow a lot of us to kind of reflect upon or think back where you're just at home for better part of last 6 months with your family i mean lot of women who have had successful careers uh, i think once they kind of bring up their family or have taken a sabbatical to bring up a family i think uh, what we as men might be going through for say 6 months or 12 months many of them has spent a decade or two decades at home just doing something that we are doing only during corona so uh, i think it is very important or it's a good time uh worldwide to kind of think upon how can you kind of really create that uh, stimulating environment for women to to come out of those four walls if they have ideas how do you kind of help how do you encourage them how do you motivate them how do you help them kind of translate it into into reality and a lot of these success stories when we talk about i think it will it will really help in uh, in, in in creating lot many more uh, women entrepreneurs creating scalable businesses um I'll go on to the next point, which is what can be done to improve the status of funding received by women entrepreneurs. I think I'll go back to an earlier point on this one. Uh, so when investors are looking at uh, putting money in a company, I don't, I, I genuinely don't feel that uh, they're they're thinking about whether it's a company founded by a man or woman. I think what they're thinking about is will this company give me the returns? Uh, many times, uh, even in case of uh, men, for example, a, a guy for uh, starting a company. Uh, might be a great idea might have great potential but the guy just might not have the the fire in the belly to kind of uh, think 10 years from today he might just be thinking short term that great idea i should latch on to it i should raise some money it will it will be a success whereas the success may not be just a short term one uh, success probably for the investor is are you thinking of building a legacy are you thinking of building a company which probably people are going to be using even 10 years from today as a product so it it is it is not uh, just 
touch upon whether it's a man uh, starting a company or a woman starting a company uh, but it is much uh, much beyond that i think uh, are you creating something which is going to deliver value are you creating something which is solving a really solvable problem so a lot of those kind of uh, fundamental things that need to be uh, assessed or looked at having said that yes there can be lots more done to improve the status of uh, funding received by women entrepreneurs because uh, statistics uh, obviously are not wrong uh, statistics are not lying when it says that for every 100 men starting a company getting funded if global average of number of women founders getting funded is only 6 it it definitely means that there is a shortfall somewhere and for that you need to take corrective measures uh, for which uh, i mean uh, i mean at a very very small level or at a micro level uh, we at startup reserve we run a program by the name uh, growthx v sprint which is focused on women entrepreneurs uh, helping them build the basic uh, building blocks of uh, starting a company growing a company of course we focus on companies which are not at an idea stage they need to be beyond that uh, having said that our focus is more about uh, how do you help people build companies at scale and we are doing a dedicated uh, a cohort of 13 weeks in which there are 15 women entrepreneurs uh, Uh, 11 of them from from india two from southeast asia and two from africa or middle east and africa and we have been working with them since uh, early mid june so these are small efforts that we feel to kind of uh, overall uh, bring about a positive impact uh, within the ecosystem or community of women entrepreneurs and will provide a platform where they pitch to investors and our goal is to see that uh, most of these women entrepreneurs uh, eventually get funded at some point in time however we are not fortunate enough to have our own uh, fund as on date so we unfortunately are not investing but the the goal is that at some point in time or the i would say the vision at vision that we operate with is that in the near future uh, and uh, if everything goes well in the next couple of quarters or around that we should be able to start making investment ourselves uh, but at the same time at a at a macro level or at a country level within india or globally i would say that yes there are uh, many more things Uh, that can be done well uh, to elevate the state of women entrepreneurs and invest in more companies that are founded by women entrepreneurs and that brings us to uh, the last point uh, that i wanted to to share i mean what is the kind of role that uh, government and industry at large can play to boost uh, the women entrepreneur ecosystem so governments uh, globally are definitely playing uh, a deeper role than what gets portrayed uh most of the most of the governments whether you're talking of uh, emerging economies of the the south south belt i mean from south america to southeast asia or even if you talk of uh, uh, top tier nations like whether it is uh, canada uk us and so on uh, i think uh, governments are setting aside a decent corpuses of funds to uh, invest in women entrepreneurs obviously the governments may not be able to directly cut a check and uh, invest in women entrepreneurs but uh, what they can do is uh, from the treasury set aside funds uh, work with very specific uh, government government back institutions academic institutions which run incubators probably act as fund of funds and channelize that money into into those uh, into those funnels uh, to uh, invest in uh, women entrepreneurs so that is something where a very conscious effort is being made by governments at different levels whether i mean uh, if you are if the country is uh, working with a federal kind of government so it is federal and provincial if it is a uh, if it's like uh, india then probably at a central and state government level uh, but there are programs that are purely for championing uh, women entrepreneurs in india in fact uh, there are also couple of banks uh, which are focused only on giving loans to uh, small and medium enterprises which are started by women entrepreneurs so we are not even talking uh, technology businesses this could be just like small micro small and medium enterprises Uh, so that definitely is happening at the at the government level uh, also government runs exchange programs so in order to provide uh, exposure to women entrepreneurs to think differently or uh, like like we keep talking about uh, uh, stay local but but think global or uh, being uh, a global kind of an economy i think it is important that you provide uh, significant exposure to uh, women entrepreneurs to other geographies other markets Uh, probably what the women entrepreneur ecosystem in some of the other countries is like so governments are doing a lot of these kind of uh, exchange programs as well and likewise industry so uh, i mean to be a bit controversial i would say that industry at times does a lot of uh, lip service because it kind of uh, looks cool to be that way uh, in media but uh, definitely like i spoke earlier uh, a lot of uh, large global multinationals uh, they do have policies where uh, procurement 
uh, a certain percentage has to be done by uh, from women owned businesses uh, similarly a lot of uh, large enterprises also run uh, accelerator programs or innovation programs or purely uh, leadership and management development programs where uh, they they like to support or they like to work with set of uh, women entrepreneurs many of them are doing it through their csr budgets uh, many of them are doing it as a part of their uh, marketing budgets or or pnl as well so industry and government definitely uh, also does play a role in in championing women entrepreneurs and and it is only in the last few years that uh, from a sensitization standpoint or advocacy standpoint a lot has been done uh, because of which if you compare uh, 2015 with 2020 you would see that uh, the number of initiatives and efforts that are out there probably even the number of women entrepreneurs out there uh, the number would be far higher or far superior and that is because i mean as an ecosystem uh, there is there is a lot of things which is happening positively or differently and i wouldn't say that this is just india centric but globally there is a lot of lot more of awareness uh, because of which uh, i think the overall state of uh, women entrepreneurs is much better than what it was a few years back uh, and and that brings us to uh, the conclusion of uh, this session obviously we are we are recording this and we will be putting this up uh, on the website and also we will be kind of uh, putting this out through our channels but uh, uh, women entrepreneurs shaping the future of economies is is an absolute uh, no brainer uh, when you are talking of almost 50% of the population of uh, of the world uh, i think uh, the ability of women to contribute to the future of economies uh, either uh, by being homemakers by being uh, by by working in government uh, by having management position in uh, in the industry or by being uh, entrepreneurs and founders of companies creating jobs uh, women entrepreneurs absolutely uh, have have it in them and uh, are shaping the future of economies it is just that we need to do our bit a little more to create a more uh, conducive and nurturing environment to to kind of safeguard protect and kind of uh, give an even uh, playing platform uh, to women entrepreneurs women founders who are who are building companies so with that i'd like to conclude this uh, session uh, thank you for being a patient uh, audience and i'll be happy to take questions if there are any thank you